I just copied a million dollar app in less than 30 minutes without writing a single line of code. And check this out. In this screenshot, you can see proof that the original app in the App Store, it's generating millions of dollars in revenue. And that was just last month. So picture this is a plant identification app that uses AI to instantly recognize any plant from a photo, providing detailed care instructions and plant information. So today, you and I were going to recreate this entire app using just one AI tool. But here's what's crazier. There is no coding required. Instead, we'll be using the best AI coding tool available right now where we literally just describe what we want and then the AI builds our entire app for us. And as a bonus, we'll also be building a custom AI agent with N8N that will automate the entire backend process, making this app even more powerful than the original. So how exactly do you go from like zero to a fully functional app that could potentially generate revenue? And what happens when you give AI complete control over the development process? I'm about to show you the exact step-by-step -step process, the AI tool that makes this all possible, the N8N automation that supercharges everything, and most importantly, the live app that was built entirely by artificial intelligence in just 30 minutes. So that by the end of this video, you and I are going to know exactly how to build professional grade apps without any coding experience. And I'll also reveal the one AI tool that's changing everything about app development. All right, say you're working on a research project or a school assignment that involves plans, of course. Having a quick way to identify species directly from your computer can save you a lot of time. So instead of scrolling through research results or comparing photos manually, all you gotta do is simply upload an image and then get get accurate information within seconds. It makes the whole process of documenting, of studying, and understanding plants a lot easier. So before we dive into building anything, I do want to walk you through a short demo so that you can see exactly how the Picture This web app works from a actual user's perspective. Now this will give you a clear sense of what the final experience should look like, how to upload a picture, how the app identifies the plant, and how it checks for health issues before we even recreate all of these features, of course, step by step. So let's start by opening up the Picture This web app on my computer. And right away, I can choose whether to take a live photo using my camera or upload an image I already have. For this demo, I'm going to upload a sample plant photo so we can follow the entire process. And once the image is uploaded, the system instantly analyzes it. It shows the plant's name, provides a reference image, and even suggests alternative matches along with their confidence percentages. It's pretty cool. Now this makes it easy to confirm the identification and understand how closely related the similar species are. Now, as you can see here below the main results, the interface is split up into three sections, details, care guide and health. The detail section gives a quick breakdown of the plant's category, family, genus, and a short description. The care guide offers practical advice, things like watering instructions, ideal lighting, environmental preferences, and even fertilization tips so that you know exactly how to care for the plant. Now the health section focuses on diagnosing potential issues. If I click check health status, the app scans the image for signs of disease or distress. If the plant is healthy, it tells me right away. And if something is wrong, the app provides a complete assessment. The primary detected disease, the other possible issues, any recommended treatment steps, optional chemical solutions, and prevention tips to avoid future problems. Now that's the full experience of using the web app from a computer, uploading a photo, identifying the plant, and then exploring care recommendations and evaluating its health. And now that you've seen how how everything works on the front end, we can now move on to building the system behind it. All right, since we now have a clear picture of how the app works on both desktop and mobile, it is time to set up the environment that will actually run our automation. Now, everything needs a home, and for this project, we're hosting N8N on a hosting or VPS. And honestly, this is where the real advantages do kick in. Self-hosting N8N on a VPS is dramatically cheaper than using N8N Cloud. 
We're talking a fraction of the cost with none of the usage limits. So you'll get unlimited workflows, unlimited executions, and the freedom to run as many automations as you want all at full speed. A VPS also gives us more control, better performance, and the ability to scale without ever having to pay per task or per workflow. And the best part, any N is completely free to use anyway. So the only thing you're paying for is the VPS, which essentially turns into your own always on automation engine. Now for anyone building serious workflows or planning to grow, a VPS isn't just an option, it's the smart move. I will begin by heading straight to Hostinger's self-hosted N8N landing page, which you can see here on your screen. Now this page is designed specifically for people who want to run N8N on their own server and then lays out everything you get when you self host, lower cost, full control, and completely unlimited automations. So from here, we'll scroll down and select the KVM-2 plan, which is the recommended option for running N8N smoothly without any limits. After we click select, Hostinger takes us into the checkout flow. And here we can fine tune the plan details and more importantly, apply the M-I-K-E-Y Mikey coupon code for an extra discount for you. We'll add that into the coupon box, apply it, and you'll see the price drop instantly. Now inside your cart, Hostinger also pre-selects the N8N server template for us, which means the entire setup from the operating system to the N8N installation is all handled automatically right after we purchase. So there's no manual configuration, there's no command line setup, everything comes pre-installed and ready to go out of the box. And now we'll go ahead and continue through the checkout, go through the purchase process, and then move ahead to provisioning the VPS. And once the VPS is created, will proceed to the setup screen here. Hostinger will prompt us to create a root password, which gives full administrative access to the server. Now, after entering the password, we'll click next, then finish setup. At this point, Hostinger automatically begins configuring the VPS for us, installing the N8N template we saw earlier and preparing the system in the background. Now, this initialization does take a couple of minutes. And during that time, Hostinger handles everything for us, installing the OS, setting up N8N, and of course, getting the environment completely ready for automation. And then once it's done, our instance is officially online and ready for the next stage of our build for today. Okay, so after setting up the VPS in the previous step, this is the part where things start to feel real. Now, if you've ever installed an app or set up a new device, you know that moment when everything finally comes online and you can actually start using it. That's exactly what this step is. Now that the server is running, we are going to finish the N8N setup so we can start building out automations on a fully hosted, ready to go system. We'll start by going back to the hosting or home dashboard. Now here at this point, we should see the VPS marked as active. So let's click manage then select manage app. Hostinger will redirect us to the N8N owner account creation page where we'll set up our main account for this instant. We need to fill out the form, click next, and then answer a few quick onboarding questions. Now, once we complete that part, we now have N8N fully hosted in our VPS, ready for customization and workflow automation. So before we continue, we'll activate the paid features that come included with this setup. So let's go to the settings, then usage and plan, and then choose enter activation key. N8N will send the activation key to our email. So we'll open up the message, copy the key, and then paste it into N8N to unlock everything. After activation, we now have access to all all of the premium features, unlimited executions, workflow retention, custom credentials, and a whole lot more. And they're all running on a secure and persistent server environment. With our N8N instance completely set up and licensed now, we're fully ready to move on to integrations and start building the automation workflows. All right, so creating the web app is where everything we've prepared finally does come together. Instead of relying on separate tools or manual testing, we're building an interface that anyone can use to upload a plant photo and then instantly receive identification and health information. Lovable will be the one to generate the front end for us and N8N will handle the logic behind the scenes. Now, connecting these two platforms will allow us to create a clean, user-friendly experience powered entirely by automation. We'll begin by opening lovable.dev and pasting in the prepared MVP prompt 
for app creation. The full prompt will be shown on your screen here, so it is easy to follow. Now inside the prompt, there's a webhook section and we'll update the link by replacing the existing URL with our own lovable project URL. So the app routes image uploads to the correct workflow. And from here, we'll switch over to our prepared workflow inside NAN. We'll add a webhook trigger node, set the method to post, configure it to respond through a respond to webhook node, and then enable the allowed origins option to avoid cores issues. Now after that, we'll add the respond to webhook node itself and set the response code to 200. And with these nodes in place, the workflow is ready to receive data. We'll copy the post URL generated by NADEN and paste it back into the lovable prompt. Now once we press enter, lovable will begin creating the first version of our app. And while the app is generating, let's go ahead and take a moment to break down a few important prerequisites. We're going to rely on two backend workflows inside N8N hosted on our VPS. Now, one workflow dedicated to planned identification, and then another dedicated to health assessment. Now, both of these workflows require API keys generated from the KindWise admin panel, and the plants.id documentation will guide us on the correct parameters to use at each request. Quest. All identification and health data comes from plant.id, the service that provides around 98% accuracy across more than 400 different plant species. Now, once Lovable finishes building the initial version of the app, we can now test the upload image feature. So we'll switch back to N8N and execute the identification workflow so it's actively listening for incoming data. Then go back to the web app and then upload a sample image. Now, you can see here on your screen that there's an error because the back end logic isn't complete yet, but you know, that is expected. Now, what we're looking for is confirmation that N8N received the base64 image data, and we'll be able to see that inside the workflow. Base64 is required by the plant.id API, so it's important that we capture it correctly. Now, to claim the incoming data, we'll add a code node to the workflow and then paste in the prepared script that extracts the base44 image code content. Then we'll rename the node to extract image, execute it, and confirm that the output contains only the image data that we need. Now, with all that working, we can begin preparing the API request. Next up, we'll open the plant.id documentation to review the parameters required for creating an identification request. And N8N will add an HTTP request node and set it to post. The URL will be shown on your screen here, and we'll add the necessary headers, including the API key, from our KindWise admin panel. In the body section, we'll also paste the prepared JSON template and display it on screen for clarity. After renaming the node post identification, we'll execute it. If an insufficient credit message does appear for you, all we need to do is add credits inside the admin panel and then run it again. Once the request succeeds, we'll receive raw plant identification results from plant.id. In order to retrieve expanded details, we'll add another HTTP request node and switch it to get. The full URL, including the access token placeholder, will be shown on your screen for your reference. All right, so from there, will include the detailed parameters, such as descriptions, taxonomy, images, watering, and common names, and then set the language to English. After executing the request, we'll have the complete data set needed by our front end. All right, so to clean up the response, we need to add a code node labeled simplify response, paste the cleaning script, and then run it. We'll then connect this cleaned output to the respond to webhook node and configure the webhook to respond with JSON so that Lovable receives structured data. After saving and running the workflow, we'll return to the app, upload another plant image, and then verify that the identification results display properly. And with identification working, we can move on to the health assessment feature. So inside Lovable, we'll prompt the app to add a check health status button underneath the health section. Now, this button should send the uploaded image to a second 
client webhook dedicated to health analysis. And now in NADN, we'll create a new webhook trigger for the health workflow. We're going to set it to post, configure it to respond via respond to webhook and enable cores. After copying the new post URL back into Lovable and allowing the app to update its code, we'll add the respond to webhook node with a response code of 200 and then execute the workflow so it's ready to receive data. We can then test the health status button in Lovable to confirm that the image is being sent correctly. Now to reuse our image extraction process, we'll copy the extract image node from the identification workflow and then paste it into the health workflow. After running it to confirm the base64 image appears as expected, we'll head back to the plant.id documentation to review the parameters required for health assessment. Here in NAN, we'll add another HTTP request node, set it to post, and paste the health assessment endpoint. Then we'll configure the query parameters to request the full disease list, and also detailed information such as local names, descriptions, treatments, classifications, common names, and causes. After that, we'll add the API key again in the headers, and then paste in the prepared JSON body. After renaming the node, get health status will execute it to retrieve the plant's health data. Now moving forward, we'll add another code node called get what's needed to format the results for the app, paste our script, run it, and then connect it to the respond to webhook node. Then we'll set this webhook to respond with JSON so that Lovable receives clean structured output. Before testing everything together this time, we need to clear all previous workflow executions and then rerun both workflows. Then we'll upload a plant image from Lovable again. If the interface appears unorganized or the health section doesn't look right to you, all we have to do is simply prompt Lovable to reformat the output. And if needed, we'll provide a screenshot and additional context until the layout matches what we expect. Lastly, we'll test one more time by scanning a new plant image, confirming the identification and health assessment data shown in the app that they match exactly what N8N returns. Now, this verifies that every part of the pipeline from image upload to API requests to final display that it's all functioning correctly. Now, before we call this project complete, we'll need to take the final step that every app developer knows all too well. That moment when you switch from testing mode to something real. It's that point where everything that we've built, you've built, tested and adjusted finally moves into production. Now, this stage is always exciting because it means the app is no longer just a prototype. And now it's about to be used the way it was meant to be. So we'll take all the work that we've done so far and prepare it for a polished public release. We'll begin by moving both workflows from testing URLs to production URLs. Each webhook trigger provides its own production link, so we'll just open them up. We'll copy the correct URL shown here on your screen, and then ask Lovable to update the app accordingly. Once the new endpoints are in place, we'll run both workflows again and test the app to make sure that everything is connected properly in its live environment. Now that the back end is switched over, we can focus on giving the web app a final layer of visual polish. We'll refine the color palette here, clean up hover effects, and make sure the layout feels consistent across all sections. As part of this pass, we'll test the take photo button to confirm that it does open up the device camera correctly on both desktop and mobile. If a black camera screen does appear, which is a common issue during early builds, all we have to do is just prompt Lovable to fix it and then test again until it behaves reliably. After updating this, we just need to review the UI to ensure it looks cohesive and that everything interacts the way users expect. Now, during this polishing phase, we might notice smaller details that need attention, like buttons with white text blending into a light background. And if that happens, all you need to do again is prompt Lovable to adjust the styling, maybe add some contrast or apply a subtle gradient so the elements stand out more clearly. And when those fixes are applied, we can rerun the 
the app once more to confirm that every interactive element looks and functions correctly. Once you're satisfied with the design and the workflows are fully connected, what we are going to do is publish the app. Here inside Lovable, we just have to click publish, choose a custom domain name, and then let the platform deploy the final version. Afterwards, we are going to copy the new domain. We're going to open it up in our browser and then verify that the live app loads as expected and performs just like our tested version. All right, you got to admit, it's kind of impressive how fast all of this came together, right? We basically rebuilt the core of a multi-million dollar app in minutes using nothing but lovable and any end. So no coding, no stress, just smart automation doing the heavy lifting for us. And if you follow along, you now have your own working version and the skills to push it even further, maybe even faster next time. Thank you for watching today and I'll see you at the next one.